You fought well, Nicole-san, but I've been training my whole life for this moment. So let me show you the Hadouken. Hadouken! <clears throat> I think we all can agree that the Amazing World of Gumball is at least top 5, top 6 greatest cartoon ever show of all time. There's really only a handful of shows that can actually beat it. But whether you agree with that or not, I think we all can come together and say that the Watersons is the most overpowered family in cartoonist. But there's one person in that family who deserves the entire spotlight. She's the human embodiment of Black Tim's, Nicole Watterson. Chapter 1 runs a T-Rex pockets. So look, in this episode, in the fight, these were really the early stages of Gumball. He wasn't about that life yet, right? He hasn't upgraded his skill tree yet. That's why he was getting bullied by Tina. But look, Tina was holding this man by his ankles, emptying his inventory, taking all his doubloons, ripping his homework, and then smashing his face into his lunch. But the homie Anais is a real one because she immediately called Tina. Hey, Tina, you've been picking on my brother, and I think it's time for you to stop before shit gotta get wicked, you heard? You said what? You whipping who ass? You finna take his what? Oh nah, Tina, you a little freak. Even though Anna used to trying to be a good sister and stop the violence, she just scheduled this man to an afternoon beating. Bro, alright, bro, bro, what the f So now it's time for the fight. And you know, whenever there's a fight in school, there's something that just resonates in people's souls that just instantly makes everyone in the area yell fight. So with everyone yelling at the top of their lungs, Obviously, a teacher's gonna have to check to see what's going on eventually, right? Unluckily for Gumball, out of any teacher that could have pulled up, it was this hating ass nigga, Miss Simeon. Yo, she gonna pull up telling everyone that there ain't gonna be no fight over here. But the moment she locked eyes with Gumball, she was like, oh no, nah, it's this nigga. Nah, I pay to see him get his ass beat. Bro was on his knees and everything. He was actually begging to go to detention. But Miss Simi is gonna turn around and walk away. If that's not some hater ass shit, I don't know what is. So Tina turns the corner and starts high sprinting towards Gumball. Bro instantly skedaddles. At this point, he's playing tub and run, running through the lunchroom, underwater, through the girls' locker room. And then he sees Mr. Smalls and he was begging him to let him in the room. When Mr. Smalls saw Tina, he was like, nah, -uh, and locked the door. And then Gumball runs straight into the door full force. So now it's dinner time and he's wearing glasses. But we all know. If it ain't prescription glasses, take them off at the dinner table because you're going to get interrogated on why you got them on anyway. So Nicole takes the glasses off his face and seen that he got a black guy and she was like, I know damn well and immediately got in a whip. Yo, she was locked in. She ain't say a single word the whole car ride. I heard looking like Nick Merckx. Yo, she pulled up on a block and Tina came sprinting around that corner. And Nicole was like, who do you think you are? And commanded her to sit instantly. So then she pulls up to Mr. Rex's crib and mind you, she was trying to be polite. Yo, Mr. Rex, we got to talk about your daughter. A word, so I'm about to put the pause on you. She rolls her sleeves up, walks into that nigga crib, and was about to give him the beating of a lifetime. In about 2.5 seconds, she walks out and was like, All right, I think we finally came to an agreement. Imagine someone pulling up to your hood, walking into your house, whooping your ass, and your crib tumbles down like some Legos. At that point, you got bitch to no return. There's no coming back from that. Chapter 2. She caught a body. So they put up to their local Walmart for their weekly shopping. And you know, whenever there's kids at a the store, they're going to ask for any and everything they could possibly imagine. Nicole was like, nah, we just out here for a nice family outing. But Gumba was not going home empty handed. It looked like he was about to cry. And we all know how this is going to play out. Nicole was like, you better not cry before I give you something to really cry about. And sent them all the way in the car. But Gumba was not going to let that slide. So he went back to the store. Somehow got on the intercom and was like, Attention all shoppers. We're offering a lifetime supply of irresistible honey buns to the first person to tackle the blue lady on IO3. Within two seconds, every Discord mod in the area became a D1 athlete and tackled Nicole. And the kids came through trying to sneak stuff in the car, but Nicole was not having it sent them all back to the car again. But this time, Richard got gaslit into thinking he was the man of the family, and he should step up and demand what he want. Yo, he pulls up to Nicole like he's about to do something. You listen to me when I'm talking? I know she's a One Piece fan. She dead used Conqueror's Hockey. I don't know what Walmart they went to, but Nicole was offered a nice massage. She was like, you know what? I might as well. Even if Walmart offered massages for this exact reason, I wouldn't accept because she done cracked something that wasn't supposed to be cracked. I can't move. What did you do? And she gonna go ahead and skedaddle like she ain't just commit a crime. And for some reason, these kids aren't terrified of the power Nicole holds because they keep pulling up over and over raising havoc. It was like, since you didn't want to give us treats, We'll just give you makeover. And look, I gotta give respect where it's due because Nicole's patience is insane. If that was me, I would've got hit with the meanest. Wait till we get home. And I would've shut me up 
instantly. But this time, instead of trying to sneak candy, Richard was dead trying to get his kids to eat the candy off the shelves. Gumbo was like, nah, I can't do it. Then Richard was like, man, y'all pussy. Grabs the chocolate off the shelf, takes a bite, then puts it back. Bro, why take a bite out of the candy, then put it back? You might as well fit. Whatever. Oh, Richard must have ops working that shift because the alarms went off instantly. So they got detained, and this is when Nicole starts to lose it. Y'all niggas finally done it. You finally pushed me over. Over what? The limit. <laughs> so she ended up chasing them through the whole store. So this plot bar has nigga. The mall cop tries to stop her, right? And he was like, please don't make me do this. And tases her. And Nicole had enough of that weak shit. Pulls the tasers off and grabs him by his collar and hit him with the... Not gonna lie, I think that counts as her catching a body because that man went from his early 20s to pushing 85. Chapter 3, the penance there. It's the weekend and that means no school. So everybody's over here chilling. And the best part is Richard is in charge. So that means anything goes. And this dude randomly pulls up and was like, hey, I heard this place has got no rules. Do you mind if I hey, hang out here? Da, da, da. Bro, I don't care how long I knew my neighbor. If we is not locked in for real, you was not chilling at the crib. Like, but well, Richard's stupid ass was like, hey why not but if he gonna let one person in then he gonna let the whole community in too so that house turned into a whole bunch of randos just doing stuff because it, it wasn't even a party they were just breaking stuff and stealing stuff like and the crazy part is they tried to stop it but they ended up getting kicked out their own crib as a different level of down bad but they ended up disguising themselves as a delivery man and was able to get back in the crib then richard burst out the pizza boxes as he was there demanding everyone to leave the crib and this dude goes or what oh no oh no 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 your gangster has been tested in your own residence normally i would say you can't allow it to slide but richard indeed allowed such tomfoolery to slide it may have been down and out but they got one more player on the side the menace has come home not a single word said she walks to the house and slams the door straight open with a single snap of her finger she sent a shockwave throughout the whole neighborhood you are going to clean this house until it looks better than when you arrived then you will leave and never come back. Or what? Look into my eyes. That boy started crying and they all instantly got to work. Bro, at this point, she done used hockey, a Sharnon, and a penance there. She got everybody's abilities. Chapter 4, Stand Over Gang. So Nicole's out here cutting up in her 86 caravan trying to get the kids to school on time. But she was like, this ain't gonna work and rips the door open, grabs her kids and starts jumping from car to car. This one dude really try to say something about it. Hey, are you crazy, you dumb? Nicole done checked his ass with efficiency. So then she sprints off and she was going so fast that she broke the speed of sound. The crazy thing is, right, her op was posted up on the block already. So Nicole pulls up on her, but she wasn't really on the top of time right now. She was trying to calm things down. But her op was not about it. All she wanted was smoke. But Nicole was trying to be the bigger person, so she just walked away. And I'm like, okay, cool, cool, cool. But the problem is that only made things worse. It went from pretty much destroying her car, flirting with her husband, ruining her entire work environment. Then Nicole got a note. She was threatening to take her house away and get her fired if she don't throw the hands. See, now that's when Yuki crossed the line. Nicole left the crib instantly and pulled up on Yuki so they can run their fade. So they get to boxing right. But Nicole got a warm up real quick before she really put hands on Yuki. So she cracks her neck and was ready to get active. Yuki dodges, slings shots herself off the ceiling, and they had a whole Dragon Ball clash. You fought well, Nicole san, but I've been training my whole life for this moment. So let me show you the Hadouken. Hadouken! Did you really think such a move will work on someone like me? The power I wield is beyond you. It will only take three seconds. No, maybe four because I'm getting a little tired. Kame, Kame. So they had a little standoff and they both was like, I'll end this with one last move. And they dash into each other with their final attacks. And then it was just the anime classes who were going to fall first. And Nicole was really standing over again for her because she looked down at her and was like, yeah. You're my bitch. <laughs>